You know, it's weird. A while back, I thought I'd run out of religious things to talk about. And then things happened. And here we are, with me talking a lot more about religion than I thought I would end up doing ever. So, what's the current line of attack? Well, I'm recording this after the loss of Roy Moore to Doug Jones, and there's been a lot of talk about religion because the evangelical population has largely supported Doug Jones, and they're not the only ones to blame, nor are they the only religious folks who have done so, but there's kind of been a focus on evangelicals and their false Christianity. And I've found that rather bizarre. Because one of the main reasons that people are going after the false Christianity of evangelicals and Roy Moore is that he's rumored to have gone after underage girls, alleged. And I will take it as read that he did because the people corroborating it seem to have some pretty good evidence going on. But you have all these people saying that they're not really Christians, they're not following the Bible, they're not listening to Jesus, they're not doing what it says in chapter, here, verse, there. And that's always been kind of a weird thing to me, because the no true Christian argument seems to be applied to everyone. And honestly, I do wonder if there is such a thing as a true Christian, because to get to almost any value in your belief system you have to either extrapolate externally or ignore parts of your holy book. There's a lot of cherry-picking that goes on when it comes to religious texts. For example, when they're talking about how, you know, Jesus never would have supported a, uh, a guy who went after 14-year-old girls, I'm sitting here going, you do understand how young they married people back in the times where Jesus would have been preaching. The problem here is that people like Roy Moore, and I don't know if Roy Moore has done this specifically, which is why I'm speaking more generally, people like Roy Moore tend to be able to go to the Bible and pull out their favorite quotes and use them to justify their arguments. And I don't think it's right. I don't think any of it's right. That's why I'm an atheist. But... At the same time, you can't argue that they're ignoring the Bible just because they ignored your favorite quote while you're ignoring theirs. And really, that happens a lot. I've been yelled at a lot for pointing out that both the Old and New Testament can be argued to support slavery, especially the Old Testament, but also the New Testament, yes. Um, that um, it was commanded that uh, women obey their husbands. The property laws prior to that about women were another issue that the bit of the Bible where Jesus says that if you look at a woman with lust in your heart, then you've already committed adultery, and that it is literally better to pluck your eye out than to end up suffering eternal damnation for what is effectively thought crime. I get defenses basically coming down to that doesn't count, or that isn't in the Bible, or you're interpreting it wrong because this part isn't supposed to be literal, but the parts that I believe in are supposed to be literal. And I think this is a problem that goes around. And to to borrow a line from Matt Dillahunty, I bet a million other people have said it, but Matt Dillahunty is the one I hear say it all the time. Um, I am I am happy that you are more moral than your God, because God likes to grab men by the balls but condemns homosexuality. God cheats at wrestling. God makes promises and then keeps them even though he is unchanging. I think it's wonderful that you show more moral character, that you're against things that are advocated for in the Bible, in both the Old Testament and the New Testament. But when you start talking about a true Christian and how they're false Christians and you're real Christians because the parts you've chosen to ignore are the correct parts to ignore, I get a little sketchy. I don't think that's a valid argument. And if you've already taken the step of establishing that certain values within the Bible are wrong, then maybe it's time to reevaluate your entire belief structure, because if you're basing it on a book that you know is flawed, you can get good morals from almost anywhere, even bad sources. Or you could just keep your religion out of the public square, and I would be absolutely fine with that, because I don't really care what you do in your personal life. It doesn't matter to me. It matters when you start to legislate things and judge others with it. After all, one of the Bible quotes that I will cherry-pick is the one about 
praying in the closet so as not to be like the hypocrites. Thanks for listening. Amaranth, out.